Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to stage four of our King and Pawn ending journey. Uh, I hope everyone is ready because it's about to get bumpy. We have in the first three stages, hopefully uh, many of you, especially players who were starting out at the beginning levels, not really familiar with these ideas at all. Hopefully everyone has watched the videos at least once or twice. And so you're, will be, you will be able to move forward confidently to the much more advanced and uh, tricky concepts when it comes to mastering these king and pawn endings. The big three is on the docket before we can say that we're done here. The big three in terms of understanding and mastering king and pawn endings are flanking, triangulation, and corresponding squares. Uh, we will get into all three and first on the docket is flanking and uh, obviously the subject of today's video, as you can see from the title. Uh, and just one more thing to remember is that if you find you're losing your way during this video, really taking the time to back up, uh, even reviewing stage three, which was a much more practical video uh, with, with some, some kind of some fun positions to help you calculate, uh, really taking the time to make sure that you, you, you've understood the evolution of what we've done so far, one thing on top of another uh, will help you. But, and um, don't be afraid to take your time doing that. It's uh, when, when building your muscles here in these king and pawn endings, you really can't skip a step. And uh, it's the same, same concept that we're applying. Like I said, one of the goals when we set out here was to master uh, the king and pawn endings, not just so that we're good at the king and pawn endings, but so that we have a better ability to evaluate all types of more complicated endings. Because every ending, um, after just a few trades, whether it's a minor piece ending, rook ending, queen ending, whatever, all endings have the potential to reach a king and pawn ending. So your understanding of the ensuing position not only you know, improves your ability to calculate king and pawn endings, but also your ability to evaluate the much more complex position. So that's just kind of the philosophy of what we're doing here. And hopefully we've all kind of ingrained that and bought into that concept. Uh, White's last move was king to b5. We are evaluating what black needs to play here in order to hold and defend this position. The topic on the docket today is flanking. And uh, before we move further, the, the first part of this position is not really um, going to be displaying a flanking idea, but it's good just to solve. Uh, hopefully you can anticipate white's threat here and, and make the right decision for your king. Obviously, you're choosing between two squares, a7 and c7. If you want to take the time to solve it, which I encourage you to, please pause the video now. Okay, and uh, you are back from your pausing video. You got up and you took a break and prepared yourself, and uh, we're going to move forward. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.